from aircraft carriers made out of ice to the mysterious flying saucer. These are five crazy abandoned military projects. Number five, the airborne laser, country of origin, dates, cost. Lasers are pretty cool, right? Everyone remembers the joy of getting your first laser pointer. It was especially awesome if you got a pack with different designs so you can stunt on everyone. Well, someone in the US government decided that lasers being used as weapons shouldn't be a child's pipe dream. The Boeing YAL-1 was a standard Boeing 747 equipped with a megawatt class coil laser. The primary purpose of the craft was missile defense and it actually worked. During the testing phase, the laser destroyed two test missiles and intercepted one target. To be fair, the enormous price tag did not just come from a few tests and a prototype. The US Air Force started the program back in 96 and the bulk of the money was spent on research and development of the laser technology itself. Unfortunately, the Secretary of Defense had this to say about the project. Sounds pretty bleak, yeah? Yeah. The whole program was officially shut down in 2011, but the technology did not disappear. By 2015, the Missile Defense Agency was trying to put electric lasers on UAV aircraft. They believe they can get this done by 2021, so not all hope for intergalactic laser fights is lost. Number 4. The Green Cheese. Country of Origin. Dates. Cost. Seriously though, the, the project was codenamed the Green Cheese using the British Rainbow Code system in the 50s. The Brits wanted a radar-guided anti-ship tactical nuclear warhead missile. Simplified, they wanted a nuke that can destroy enemy ships. Which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Green Cheese was off to a rocky start. The original plane the missile was designed for proved impossible to use since the bomb base could not support the massive 3,800 pound missile. But they found an aircraft that could. Codenamed the Black Banana, the Blackburn Buccaneer airplane had a rotating bomb bay which was perfect for the nukes. In 1956, the project reached a stage called Cockburn Cheese and due to insanely high costs and questionable practicality, the Green Cheese was officially scrapped. Only to be reborn as the Green Flash Project, which was also cancelled. Number 3. Project Habakkuk country of origin, dates, cost. This one, this one is really strange guys. Jeffrey Pike, an inventor that worked for the British Combined Operations Headquarters during the war, came up with an insane idea. An aircraft carrier made out of ice. Well, pikerite to be exact, which is a mixture of wood pulp and ice. Since steel and aluminum were in extremely short supply, the Allied forces needed something cheap and efficient to use in their winter operations in the Atlantic. The ice structures would act as a midway point for aircraft that were deep in enemy territory and could not fly all the way back to friendly lands. Even Churchill was interested in the project, and scale models started popping up around Canada. However, it turned out that the ice ship would need a lot more than just wood pulp to keep its structural integrity. By the end of 1943, it was realized that the total cost of one of these ice ship islands would be more than building an actual fleet of conventional aircraft carriers. And thus, Project Habakkuk was no more. Number 2. Bartini Beriev VVA. Country of origin. Dates. Cost. The Bertini Beriev VVA, VVA standing for Vertical Takeoff Amphibious Aircraft, was thought of by the Italian-born designer Robert Bertini. His story is actually quite interesting. During the rise of fascism in Italy, the Soviet Union welcomed him with open arms. He defected in 1923 and took many secret plans and designs with him. He became an important part of the Soviet Union's Air Force cabinet. Bertini also spent eight years in prison after being falsely accused, but that did not stop him from creating new plans for strange airplanes. Okay, okay, back to the project. The aircraft was designed to be able to fly at high speeds at high altitudes, while also having the capability to fly just above the sea surface. It was supposed to somehow help destroy US Navy submarines. It is believed that only a few prototypes were built, 
and due to inefficiency from companies supplying required parts, the project slowed down immensely. In 1974, the aircraft's fate was sealed when Bertini passed away. You can find the last known survivor at the Russian Federation Central Air Force Museum. And by the looks of it, it won't last there much longer. Before we jump into number one, thank you all for the kind words. Glad you enjoy the content. Tiger Queen, Luis Lopez, Shailina, thanks for sharing these awesome stories. It's cool to hear about these places from locals. And as far as honorable mentions go, this is a shout out to animals that have been involved in military projects. First, we have the anti-tank dogs from the USSR. Poor doggies. They were strapped with explosives and trained to run towards tanks and armored vehicles. The project was riddled with horrible problems and the program was canceled after one year. There was also the idea of using bat bombs. The gist of it being loading out thousands of bats strapped with mini incendiary bombs and then dropping them on Japanese cities. The bat bomb was never realized due to time constraints. Who can ever forget Project Pigeon? Again, the military wanted to strap bombs to animals and let them go into enemy territory. Many thought the idea was stupid and the project was canceled, only to be revived again a few years later. But by that time, electronic guidance systems were emerging as the better choice. Finally, we have the Acoustic Kitty, probably the least sinister animal in the battlefield idea. The CIA implanted a cat with a microphone and tried to spy on the Soviets. The unofficial story states that the cat was released and immediately hit by a taxi. However, a former director for the CIA claims this never happened and the cat actually lived a long and happy life. Yay! Number 1. The Avro Canada VZ9 Country of Origin Dates Cost In the early years of the Cold War, the US Air Force and Army commissioned a top secret aircraft project, and they chose Canadian based Avro aircraft to design and build it. The US wanted a VTOL, a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, that was very fast, efficient, and deadly. Well, that was the original concept, anyways. The project was scaled back immensely over the years due to design problems. It all started off as wishful thinking and turned into proof of concept in the span of three years. Can you imagine being a little kid walking through the woods in the back and seeing this experiment go down? Nobody would probably ever believe you. Hell, you might even end up being that weird kid who talks about aliens all the time. The most important part of the Avrocar was its concept creator, Mr. Jack Frost. He was a very respected aircraft designer that moved from Britain to Canada after the war. The design of the Avrocar was sophisticated to say the least. In the center, there was a 124 blade turbo rotor that was powered by three jet engines. Look at this diagram, but not for too long since it says secret twice on it. Design 1 had its issues. Design 2 tried to improve on them, but ultimately, the craft was unstable. It never got close to reaching the estimated maximum speed of 300 miles per hour. In reality, it could not pass 35 miles per hour due to serious instability. Funding was cut abruptly. The project was seen as a dead end, and we never got to fly high in a saucer shaped aircraft. The second model of the Avrocar got the most flight time, logging in about 75 flight hours, which is pretty impressive in itself. It must have been hard for the pilots to hop into this bad boy and feel confident enough to hover above ground while the rumble of three jet engines underneath them was giving them a not so gentle massage. The first Avrocar collected dust for over 40 years in the basement of the National Air and Space Museum. It was eventually restored and put on display. Nowadays, you can find it in the Presidential Aircraft Gallery. The second design is currently under restoration at the US Army Transportation Museum in Virginia. Everyone wants to believe that the truth is out there. And maybe it was. Maybe the project was only scrapped from the books and continued somewhere in the Nevada desert. What do you think? Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.